Can a small device actually do automatic nmap scans these days to find vulnerabilities on networks? So in this video, we're going to talk about that. Doing nmap scans is a thing that, you know, security research has been doing for a long time. Typing the normal command of nmap and IP address adding some flags to get somewhat the image you see here on my screen right now. Now, that kind of command is really powerful to find the open port, the services, to execute different kind of scripts, to find certain kind of vulnerabilities on a server. But can that be done automatically? So we're going to talk about that right now in this video. There's something called Bjorn, and it's something that's been come to my attention for some time now. Um, I've seen other researchers on YouTube uh, talking about it, or YouTube, you could say. And basically what I what I get from this device is that this is a somewhat, you know, pen test device. I really just tried to show you the picture so we can highlight it. I cannot do that. Okay, great. So Bjorn is a automatically Tamagotchi-like, sophisticated, autonomous network scanning vulnerability assessment and offensive security tool designed to run on a Raspberry Pi equipped with a 2.13-inch e-paper hat, you know, the small displays, the same kind of displays as we see on the Ponagotchi. This is why they say Tamagotchi. And <laughs> they could probably have created a name for this, like Bjorn or something like that, or Port Agotchi, or this or such a sounds bad. So the document we're looking at here, right, is the official GitHub repository. And we're going to look at whenever things were posted the first time and the last time, last week, two weeks ago, days ago, and so on. So we're looking at a quite great updated repository, which is um, something that we see <laughs> not that often when it comes to gadgets and so on, we find on GitHub repositories. They tend to being released and then they stop updating the repos and that's just the way it is, you know. But this seems quite um, interesting and we're looking at the different Tributus, if that is the way we pronounce it today. And what we're looking at here is basically a really good, well documented Raspberry Pi Zero um, device. And we do have a bigger image here, and it says it indicates when Wi Fi is connected to the target network. Okay, so that's the explanation of the screen we're looking at. It looks, um, <laughs> I, I guess what they tried to do is to create some sort of Viking on the hunt, which is, I, I it's fun, you know. Um, so they, they said like, indicate when Bluetooth, don't indicate when the USB series is plugged in, when IP has been shared, number of IP tag detected. So number of open ports, number of vulnerabilities, Number of crack credentials, interesting. Number of zombie machines with persistence via IP. No idea that, that is really. Uh, total number of stolen files from all attacks. And then they doing some Nmap Vuln scan. It does seem like. Uh, dialogue zone where Bjorn talks to you about everything. Comment depend on action and so on. Yeah, so animated and styling, different kinds of images, scanning, brute forcing, stealing. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, some gamification stuff. I, it's, it's, it's fun, I guess. Let's look at the UI one more time. Uh, not that. It looks like they did actually do something to it, you know. It's um, quite intuitive. These, these kinds of plays here are when you write something on it, they, it's gonna be like that when you turn it off. So, um, they can be quite nice, you know, doesn't require a lot of power to run. I'm kind of curious what 
how much power this device actually use because they do talk about a the the paper hat they use um Anyways, let's talk about the intro features now. The intro features, the features, network scan, identify live host and open ports and network. Well, that's great, I guess. Perform vulnerability scans using Nmap and other tools. Okay. Conducts brute force attacks on various services: FTP, SSH, SMB, IDP, Telnet, SQL. Okay. File stealing, extract data from vulnerable uh, services and real-time display. Yeah. Okay, so when you're doing stuff, when you are actually on, you know, in a company and you want to show off, like, what kind of device is there now for people they can go ahead and download and create for themselves. These kind of, you know, features they talk about here is no different from, I want to be honest, you know, just running the in-map scan and running yourself a Hydra or something like that, and it's a lot more powerful this is a, a little more incognito, but it kind of needs to be connected to the network, right? So, um, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious how they solve that, but you need some sort of Wi-Fi, you know, you, this is of course a Wi-Fi thing. So you wouldn't need to be connected to Wi-Fi on this to the same network. Whether that require a carrier device, meaning, you know, iPad or phone that that actually supply that connection with an actual real interface, and then you put the Beyond or the, the Raspberry Pi Zero, if you can call it, but the Beyond onto the phone. Um, I, I'm not really sure yet, but we're going to talk about it. Getting started. Prerequisites for RPI Zero W, thirty two bits. So. They talk about the stable needs to be uh, 32 bit, um, and used to have this uh, paper hat, 2.13 inch. This is the measurement you would need to go for on Amazon, for example. Uh, they do talk about it's not developed for Raspberry Pi 2 with 64 bit, but there has been, you know. Um, some testers that actually uh, told they it worked great. This would also give a much better, you know, speed to this device. But I want to be honest, already now, it doesn't really matter, you know, because this device is not for, not here to perform at a, at a high speed. It will never do that. At best, it can do just a tad more if you upgrade it to 64-bit Pi Zero version 2. Um, this is a awareness device something you can show and say look how far we come with the least amount of software and hardware we can get and this is what these devices do they stand out and and show people and security professionals and and basically the security professionals can use this device to show their own management say hey listen you know now they can do this you know and and, and it's just handheld it doesn't matter i think it's pretty soon we can, we're gonna see this at tindy someone selling it and tindy for example um so the uh, paper screen version two and four have been tested and implemented uh they hope version one and three will work the same the fast version install is to basically just do wget run the installer. Um, and something about if you cannot find the IP on it, um, then you can use the Beyond Detector to find the device on the network. Apart from that, um, you can also uh, get a hand of them, I guess, if that is you need. And there's some examples here, you know, um, reconnaissance uh, phase, network scanner, discovering a, a live host. And this is usually what you do with the nmap scan, you use the nmap, and then you write the IP address and the range with a, with a slash. Um, so I would say they probably run some sort of nmap. I guess they do. It would be really weird if they didn't. Um, and... They will try and and do some some cracking. I I think this is pretty fun, you know. When we think about you know having stuff like try hack me for example, how can we make this device do a security scan on try hack me's machine? You know, so we actually tell it to do something. But this the problem here I see is 
this is way too aggressive. So this is going to be like, it finds something, you're going to try something, and then that's it really. So, yeah. So it is real brute force, stomping tables, and stuff like that, if you can access. So it's kind of aggressive. This is a, I think, a black hat device. It was just a demo output, of course, they told. Um, and of course, they have to have this disclaimer, because this is what it is. Uh, the product welcomes contributions in new attack models with bug fixes, documentation, and so on. I would really hope to see some slight, some like auto update, like the bleed shark. They talk about the bleed shark. I'm just quickly showing it to you right now. So the bleed shark on Kickstarter. Let me see if I have it. There we have it. And this unit here actually does support automatic updates when it's connected to the internet. I really hope to see the same kind of features on other devices we uh, see shipped online, um, sold online. Uh, yeah. So this is the Bjorn, the automatic pen testing vulnerability scanner. So we're gonna go ahead and check a look at the code here. I see what we find. Uh, we have the web, the resource data config backup, and the actions. The actions. FTP connector, scanning, SSH, Telnet connector. So let's go ahead and look at scanning. I guess that would be written in Python. Import nmap so that we have it. They use nmap. And we can see down here they do a class, the handle in time network scanning process. So they start the normal port scanner. So that is what they, um, that's how they actually port scan the whole thing on a network. You know, it's just a lot of code, rather tedious to go through. So um, also when we're going to do stuff like SSH connector, they probably use Paramico, I see that that there right there, you know, that's great. So they they do stuff like, you know, let's just see, brute force, uh, execute, locker shared, all these kind of things. Uh, yeah, just a lot of code again. Uh, probably some sort of loop somewhere, or recursive features. We have a connect attempt right there, edit policy, so great connect. So SSH connect, it's right there, while not, yes, so we have a while loop right there, connected inside. So this is a lot of loop with the user and a password. Um, where will that will come from? I, I literally have no idea. I'm just basically checking out what's going on. Backups, configs, I guess, data, output, input, dictionaries. So there we have it. We have some uses, <laughs> three uses and some passwords. Yeah. Okay. We we'll definitely need to have more than that, you know, on it. But it seems like kill port 8000. Well, that's interesting. But it seems like they did a good job on getting these things sorted out. Um, so i will definitely, definitely say that, you know, the Infinition, Infinition, yeah, the guys behind it, uh, powerful, you can debate that, useful, um, I would say it's very interesting. I actually just bought the Raspberry Pi W with uh, headers sorted on because I don't sort of stuff. It's just, just not something I do. Um, and I also bought the, 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 the paper hats. So I'm actually waiting for those being shipped with Amazon to me in a few days. And then I'm going to try and install it myself and create this device. I will of course showcase the device on, I guess my own network, because how can I do it? I'm going to try and find a way to do it on a tri machine. That would be really fun just in one IP, but that would probably require, you know, some sort of access to Bjorn. Um, and I'm really sure 
if that is possible uh, to say like only this or that or if there is uh, as I understand there is some sort of web interface as well and since they haven't really yeah web uh, there we have it some HTML stuff uh, screen no index okay that's not helping um, okay, so there is some sort of web interface you can log on and, and depending on what you can do in this uh, I'm kind of interested in, in, in if we can direct and control Bjorn from the web interface uh, that would be really cool so all these kind of things and questions I'm going to try and find the answers whenever I get the device I will also try and actually create a video of me assembling the Raspberry Pi and unboxing it and showing you how things are done and then we will you know learn something together and find out whether this is a flip or a flop if you can call it that I guess a good thing or a bad thing I kind of think this is going to be great it's going to be fun I like these kind of new projects and I think you know from here on you know let's just wait for me getting the devices I need uh, the Raspberry Pi W0 and my hat for it so we can get the features visible. And this is what we can do these days. We see more visible devices and stuff like that. I'm definitely going to go ahead and see if I can find some 3D printed case for it. And, you know, it's probably going to be any, any of those 3D printed cases I can find on... Thindy or something like that, and then not not Thindy, I mean like the thingy worse, there we go. And see if we can fit it. Yeah, or maybe they can actually maybe they have have some something right here. I've just haven't seen it. Um But if it's something I'm gonna go ahead and try and look for. Okay, so for now I wanna say thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, you know, give it a thumbs up and if you have any comments about this device, what do you think about it? Would you like to buy it? Would you get it? Would you try it? You know, leave the comment below and I'm going to see you online again next time. Have a really nice day.